to the sharing wheel. Uh, today we're, we have uh, Eric Modal, uh, Jennifer Friedson, and Matthew Martin. Martins. Martins, sorry. Excuse me. Mm, right. And uh, er Eric, <laughs> um, owner and, and founder of uh, Bean Trust Coffee. Uh, I would say you're a pioneer in coffee. You brought Pete's to this area and also cold brew as well. Um, and you're also a, uh, someone who uh, cultivates community, a uh, coffee-driven super connector. That's <laughs> you can use that. And Did I've you know seen you were that there? time in and time out uh, at, at, at Bean, Bean Trust. Uh, it's pretty, pretty amazing to witness. Um, so thank you for being here, Eric. It's great to be here, Sean. Mm -hmm. And Jen, uh, entrepreneur. Hello. Um, and Jen is a lover of uh, nature, let's say, uh, sustainability, yes. uh, community, Check. Uh, food, <laughs> and, and, and tr trying to kind of weave them all, all, all together. Uh, and you uh, formerly uh, were part owner of Chive. And uh, yeah, no, Jen, Jen's awesome, and I appreciate uh, you're always moving forward, always come <coughs> new ideas and moving with new ideas, and uh, you're not resting on your laurels. Thank right? you. You're always that. And math, uh, re reference department librarian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just woke up from my own laurels, by the way. And, <laughs> yeah, but and, uh, I made it on time there. And you'd like to be called, um, like to switch your name? Do you want to do that now? or? Yeah, or? yeah. I think that from now on I would like for people to call me Mats. Mats? Yeah. Okay. So. And that's new. That, is uh, that the close? Swedish. Sweet, Swedish. Think okay. Mats Wielander, the yeah. tennis player. Ah. Um, just, you know, yeah. just to mix things up. Although people yeah, yeah. can feel free to continue to call me Matthew or Matt. Or, yeah. or Michael I get sometimes, yeah. or Mark. I okay. don't really care. As long as I know I'm being referred to, I, I will acknowledge you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably use all of the above during, okay. during this interview. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and Matt's, uh, Matt has been a great help to me over the years. Uh, he's been at the library for 18 years. 18 years. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, and I remember you uh, when the kids were young. Uh, I start praising the library, I start getting emotional. I know. So. <laughs> yeah. We love that about you. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, really appreciate what the library does and what, what you do. A huge impact on a community central to Beverly, uh, as important as the school system, in my mind. Had a great impact on my kids. So, we very much appreciate the appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, thank yeah. you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all you guys, um, I know you have uh, ideas of like, what you like to do in the community? Um, so, uh, Jen, I'll uh, we'll start with you. And what what are you up to? Cool. Yeah. Um, well, just a little quick sidestep. I feel like we've been friends through coffee shops in Beverly, probably for twelve years. Mm -hmm. We've at known least. each other. If Old it, atomic days. <clears throat> at uh, least. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And yeah. intertwined in different community elements along mm -hmm. the way, and. That's such a nice rhythm of being engaged in community. A good example mm -hmm. of being engaged is just getting to see people in their different parts and stages. Mm -hmm. And so a few months ago when you shared that you're creating the sharing wheel mm -hmm. um, to support individuals in our community, lifting up and like speaking out ideas and concepts for businesses or beyond that mm -hmm. they are interested in creating but sometimes when we lock them up and don't share them, they can maybe stay in that mode. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Sit in the shelf. Um, so I was lucky enough to be a part of that first sharing wheel. And so this feels like a awesome next version of that. And, and so just from a vulnerable place, I would say that I owned and operated a sustainable event design and catering company with a partner of mine for 12 years out of Beverly. Chive. Chive. And we chose to close early 2020 due to what we foresaw was going to happen mm -hmm. with the, you know, pandemic. not knowing it was a pandemic right, yet, but really right. seeing kind of looking globally for the signs that that was really what was coming. And while it was a really hard 
decision to make it was the right one, I feel. And I know we've talked about this and mm-hmm. we've talked about this. Um, so breathing and grieving and moving our way through that, we say we composted that business. But really, the energy of it and the people we met, the community that we got connected to around here as a really positive byproduct of that that business Mm -hmm. feels so alive and well and really i just feel like it's transferring the energy yeah from that compost pile you know to the next thing and um so a few years i've been supporting different mostly female-owned startups um with their versions of new businesses that are mission driven and I love that but I've had this thing cultivating for like 15 years and it feels like it's starting now and so the the it, the, the baseline of it is that I see society right now really divided I think a lot of us talk about that in our polarization moments of connection and when I kind of reflect on some of the skills that I've been fortunate to gather over the years um, creating safe space where people feel like they belong that happen to be beautiful and joyful is one of them. Eric, I think you have that. And so I'd like to leverage that in my own like frontline way related to this like polarization. So how can we bring people together? And so the idea is not new. It's a community bathhouse which has existed for a long time in humanity's history globally, but the United States is a little slow on it. Although, um, so really hydrotherapy is the base of it. So hot water, like hot tubs and saunas and cold plunges and that benefit Mm. of both heat and cooling. And I've said this a few times Mm. when we've chatted, just that metaphorical and physical concept of stripping down to we are just human, Mm -hmm. let's be humans together and have this good version of stress that then can activate us to hopefully go out and be real citizens to mm-hmm. our neighbors in the community. So um, it's it's bubbling. Mm. I love it. It's like Doesn't have a name yet. Going pre-cultural in order to improve culture. So yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's my long answer. Thanks for listening. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Now, I'm curious if I can ask. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's free so flowing. in supporting the... Uh, uh, women-owned businesses is there like is there direct investment involved in that or i mean is there fundraising is that part of it or is it more about networking etc the pieces that i've been connected yeah, with yeah yeah um well it's it's sort of fluid and on a spectrum so it's um some of my skills are more in that design space creation end of the real mm-hmm. realm. So I've been helping with creative direction or physical space design to make sure it's always aligned to a value set mm-hmm. and a mission statement and who that individual is that's leading and why it's important. Sometimes those values and missions aren't eloquent yet or aren't sure. tied up in a way that that leader can really engage and pull in um, not just the people that are a part of their team, but also um, doing the the work and the application. Mm-hmm. So I tend to back them up a little bit mm-hmm. if they haven't done that work yet and say, oh, I know that you want to make this beautiful and I know you want to have this product or whatever it might be, but before we go there, mm-hmm. let's get clear on these things because they will drive everything. Right, sure. Yeah. Good good advice right there. Thanks. For people. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to tighten up your vision, articulate yeah. to the community, etc. Well, it helps lead yeah, yeah. everyday yeah. question That's answering, right. yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Totally my perspective. But yeah. no. Makes sense. Mm. Amazing. And Matthew, I know you, um, Matt. <laughs> We're practicing together. Uh, actually, to be honest, anything other than Matthew still sounds a little weird to me, but okay. I, I'm working on myself, too. So. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you, you have some initiatives um, that or ideas at the for, library for that you would program? like to, to, to go forward with? Sure, yeah. sure. Well, I do want to say just in, in general, in terms of connecting with community and my work at the library, 
one of the nice things about the fact that I live right downtown, um, and so I, you know, I walk to work and back a couple of times every day, and I'm also just around Beverly all the time, the rest of the time as well, um, is that I kind of take on this kind of librarian on the streets, you know, yeah, uh, I've seen ca you capacity. Walking, reading a book I do, walking, I do, do I that. Love. And people love to comment yeah, yeah. on that yeah, and yeah. Uh, tell me to be careful, and I appreciate. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of how do you do that, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I explain the bird-like peripheral vision that I've cultivated over wow. many years, but yeah. um, it, I, I just a lot of I run into people that I know from the library, of course, all the time, sure. and just have. You know, conversations with them in in a way that's probably similar to. I mean, it's happened with you sometimes too over the years, right? Just run sure. into oh, you yeah, on the street. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, okay. But so there's some similarity between that and the kinds of conversations that perhaps you have, um, you know, there at the coffee shop. Um, but I just love the idea, and maybe you know, having been a philosophy student when I was younger, you know, the whole just the, the Socratic philosophy on the streets kind of an idea, mm -hmm. and uh, I just feel like it's the the best possible way to sort of just keep to remain aware or to become aware of things that are going on around town is just to be out and about and to talk to people, you know, um, which is one of the reasons why I thought this was such a neat thing to do, too. Mm -hmm. um, so now as for uh, programs at the library, I mean, we've got all kinds of things all the time, of course, but just to speak for me, because I'm not here speaking on behalf of the library or the city, I'm just here in my capacity as Matt's slash Matthew slash et cetera. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, but I, uh, yeah, some things that I've been putting, I do a book group that I have done for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, the third Tuesday of every month. Um, we're doing Watership Down next yeah, month. Yeah, we're talking about that. Yeah. yeah, pick up books at the library. Um, but uh, some new things I've got coming up are um, a uh, German language um, chat group. Abend Gespräch, wow. evening conversation. Very That'll cool. be um, December, I think December 11th, but don't quote me on that. Um, but it's something like that oh. in December. Um, so that's the first time I'm doing that. And I'm, I've got a couple of people around town I'm talking with about um, actually a, a philosophy discussion group, nice. something along those lines yeah, yeah. as well, um, including a couple of people from over at uh, St. St. Mary's. Um, so it will not be religious in any way, but um, but of course there's some connection between religion and philosophy, historically speaking, and so sure. it can enter into the conversation. So that's something that's coming up. We do something every every twice a year. I think it's probably going to be from from now on, where we try. I try to update people on new developments in cord cutting. You know and digitization of analog media, things like that. And I get a lot of people who come in, you know, you, you think everybody knows it by now, but none of us does because it keeps changing, sure. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but particularly with respect to how do I, how do I cancel my cable and, and uh, you know, save money and use over the air TV? Is that really a thing anymore? Yes, it is, etc. cetera. And so, so I do that. Um, and, uh, yeah. Then I also have one-on-one -on -one sessions in the library about whatever tech issue people want to talk about. Um, also things like resume help and job mm -hmm. hunting help and things like that. And then, of course, if I run into these same people on the street, we can have follow-up conversations at that point. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize the scope of what you do. Awesome. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah no doubt. I'm also entirely responsible for the compact disc collection, and people do still take out a lot of CDs if if you have an interesting enough collection. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you also, um, if someone's searching for a book, like you will help them. Well, that's like internet. Is it, that is, is it? that's the nuts and bolts of the yeah. reference librarian yeah, yeah, yeah. work. Um, is uh, mm -hmm. If people are looking for materials, books, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. any kind of media, um, or including electronic media, because yeah. people are now able to access all kinds of everything you can imagine. Yeah. Anything you can pay for, <clears throat> you can probably get for free through the library. That's awesome. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's yeah, yeah, right. I mean, people may forget sometimes some of them that uh, there are alternatives to. 
Google searches, and yeah. it's entirely possible, as people discover all the time when they do make use of our services, that uh, you know not all searches are created equal, and mm -hmm. that people who spend all of their time doing this kind of thing mm -hmm. might have some ideas about how to track things down mm -hmm. that wouldn't occur to you. And why should it? It's not yeah. your job, mm -hmm. um, but it's mm -hmm. our job. So. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's good to have the opportunity to remind people of that if anybody out there isn't aware of it. Mm. Yeah. Take advantage. You're paying taxes. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, assume you'll be well. You're welcome. A fantastic uh, human resource. Yes. Yourself, you know, what you do. Well, that's a well. big part of it. Yeah. In, in yeah. case by the library. That's because, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. AI is making great yeah. strides, but, um, but and, no NI still has a considerable advantage. Yeah. What's that? There's no substitute for math. There certainly isn't. Yeah. yeah. You're, I've described you as the uh, James T. Kirk when you come up into the library. <laughs> you're at the reference I like it. desk, the, uh, <laughs> staring at the, the library spaceship. I just yeah. wish I could have all the sound effects. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no it, phasers it, it allowed in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, awesome, and Eric, um, and I know I know you're up to. Um, you've been working with like the innovation lab in Cambridge, like a. Cambridge Innovation Lab. Cambridge, okay, yeah, yeah. And you, you, you usually have like four or five, six, seven, eight or nine different things going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how you uh, are able to kind of nav navigate that and then also be open to new things as well. Um, I've witnessed that first firsthand. Um, yeah, what's, what's going on? Uh, firstly, I just want to say how, again, how good it is to be here with you all because I think a lot of times we don't get opportunities to have conversations with each other and really listen to each other and hear from each other. Um, we end up filling a lot of space with a lot of noise and talking and, and listening to podcasts, <laughs> <laughs> but, but oftentimes we don't take time to really think and to really like um, ask questions why, mm -hmm. really resonate with creating space for philosophy. My cousin yesterday um, called me up. His wife plays in the San Francisco Symphony Ooh. and um, they're contemplating a strike. They're going through issues. Mm -hmm. um, and my Doug just, my cousin Doug wanted to give a call and he's become kind of a brother friend and he reached back in time and said how thankful he was that I came out for about a month mm. while his dad um, passed away and I was there when he breathed his last breath. And, and at that point, Doug had to leave to go play in the symphony. He was playing the symphony at that time, French horn. So I was there. And, I, and he said to me, he said, Eric, you're the only person I can talk to about these deeper questions of why in philosophy. So I think, um, you know, Matt's what you're doing is a great, great work as being able to be a resource and and um, and allowing people to think and to point people in ways that they can find their own journey. And um, and it's not like playing God where you're creating something out of nothing, but it's but I've in been some trying ways, that, but so far nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but in some ways, it really resonates with I think what we were talking about earlier. What Jen was saying about uh, older cultures mm -hmm. and older times and other people and um, yeah, we can't have a friendship of sorts with a with somebody of another generation for sure. Yeah. And uncovering some of these principles of old, like mm -hmm. those bathhouses, and mm -hmm. and getting under the skin and finding commonalities with one another, I don't think is anything new. No, I feel like um, in our day and age, it might be a bit foreign to touch somebody or to, uh, to be uh, asking questions of why. Um, but yet, the more we practice that, the more fluid it becomes and more conversational. In fact, the word conversation kind of means leaving each other in a better place. So it's not just a digital mere transfer of information. Right. It means your walk or your deployment or how you carry yourself. And when you leave one another, you're leaving each other in a better way. So, yeah, that attitude of conversation is, it, is not anything new. And I think, um, Sean, to ask, answer your question, I feel like what am I up to now I think is really a good question because 
Uh, each day is a new day. Each conversation is a conversation. This table, we're all welcomed here at the table. And I feel like it's a bit like Miles Davis and Coltrane showing up mm. uh, with their sense of mastery, their sense of history, totally. and creating new works. Mm -hmm. And here we are at the table um, coming from different paths. Yeah, we do have some commonalities. I've chatted with Matt's at the reference table and have had good conversations. Mm -hmm. I met Jen uh, years ago in Boston at an event, mm -hmm. and it's really interesting how you can catch somebody's character, I believe, a bit in a very short time. So I knew I wanted to know Jen more by that um, very large event that I participated in, and I could see uh, the work ethic of Jen, and, mm -hmm. and I could see the manner. Mm -hmm. So I think those are two very important things to me. Um, a, a mastery of something and a deep learning, but also your attitude and your manner. Mm -hmm. well, and um, before I move on to what I am doing, I also want to resonate with values with Jen was bringing up. I think that's the first, uh, one of those first priorities in a conversation or getting to know one another or starting a project or helping somebody or communicating out what you do. Mm -hmm. If you have your values, and you should be able to say, my first value is quality. My first value, second value is trust. My third value is candor. Mm -hmm. And all of that just cascades into creativity mm -hmm. so that we can do things that possibly okay. in a different way haven't been done before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what gives you the energy to give you purpose to show up <clears throat> right now. And, and so I feel like if you've done some of that work and see what drives you a bit. Um, you can formulate ideas that really, I believe, can be effective and, and can be a work that has some perseverance mm -hmm. and gives hope. Mm -hmm. So today I show up in a way that I want to um, be a friend, basically. Uh, not only to myself and have good conversations that are cogent, that pay attention to my heart, that pay attention to my aspirations, but s in a similar way with others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those others that, that desire to show up in a way that is, um, resonates with, with my core values. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I find that's what's driving me right now is... Um, wanting to be in company with others that I can have meaningful conversations and be refreshed and be able to encourage mm -hmm. um, back and forth. While drinking coffee. Yep, coffee. Ideally. Coffee's a big, yeah, coffee is, yeah, coffee's my first conversation in the morning, really. I, I smell and taste. and starter, hey? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say, Eric, and it's funny because each of you have met in these ways, when we're when we have the ability to, or we make the intention to look up, and I don't mean when you're walking and reading your book, that's you time. And I, <laughs> that's, love that that's for, important I love that too. for you. Yeah. But you know, in the library, connecting with somebody in real time, hearing what they're looking for and that engagement, yeah. intentionally meeting somebody at a coffee shop or running into somebody at a coffee shop, and then taking that time to say, what? is new like what's going on for you mm -hmm. and then having that dialogue back and forth mm -hmm. so much can come from that intentional connection and that eye to eye i think um yeah. engagement especially when you're choosing every morning to show up in your best most purposeful mm -hmm. way um mm. really meaningful yeah. connections can Definitely. grow and the, and the ideas that uh evolve from those types of conversations and that's sort of what perfect example the right sharing now. rails in, in essence about is like how do you take a like a really good coffee shop idea you know a lot of times you'll mm. be brainstorming with people but when you leave the it just dissipates you sure. know until the next cup of coffee you know so there's a word called so. subsidiarity that i've been resonating mm -hmm. with for years and it means be effective at the most basic level and um i do think that is really important mm -hmm. to do a great work in a very local way whether it's politically whether it's business-wise socially so that's what i'm Desiring to practice What's and the word again? subsidiarity, Subsidi subsidiarity. Great. Okay. Yeah, mm. and it's kind of like a new localism type attitude that I want to approach to it, where it's yeah, very, very 
um, localized mm -hmm. and you have a practical application of what you're doing. And then I can take that practical application of, we might call coziness, we yeah. might call... Gemütlichkeit. Yeah. Yeah. Into, um, into the workplace. That a German That's word? German yep. coziness, Gemütlichkeit. Gemütlichkeit. Yeah, Gemütlichkeit. Norwegian Hugo. Yeah. Hugo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, and bring that, that, that warmth, that element of um, genuine connecting, and bring it into all the spheres. Mm -hmm. Some people might call that a bit of organizational psychology. Others in the workplace mm -hmm. might call it industrial psychology. But this mm -hmm. attitude of, like, how do we connect um, in ways that mm -hmm. are more real mm -hmm. and in ways that are give access to everybody um yes. yeah so like that's kind of my globally, aspiration act yeah. locally yeah kind of when, when because something that's coming up when you're talking about the accessibility aspect if we just get into our tunnel of local which might in some ways translate at times to people for a group that they're used to being with as opposed right. to the broader group and the ways in which, at least yeah. this is something I think about often, I also yeah. we'll love psychology and the, like why yeah. we think the things we do and what makes us all human regardless of our socioeconomic background, the color of our skin, where we originate from. And just that feeling of the more globally we can think and get exposed, the local acts can be potentially inspired by that sense of we all, all and I'm personally this is the environmental piece like all living beings not just the human race you know because mm -hmm. it is so intertwined sure so that I yeah. don't know I think right. about that a lot being local doesn't have to mean being provincial you know no. and I've <laughs> right. struggled yeah. at right. times um, over the 40 years I've been on this planet with this I want to act locally because I feel like I can connect with people in that. But is that enough? Is it right. enough not yeah. to create some yeah. global organization right, that's right, right. combating whatever? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I, what I've come to a few times and keep kind of like hitting up against over and over again in a beautiful but sometimes hard way is is yes, actually, the more we it, it, the spider. Yeah. I believe in like yeah. a spider web yeah. effect. Yeah. So it's not just and our one act. Kind of, we yeah. when we do things with intention and follow through with it and engage with others, it becomes this right. Because it's mycelial, right? Everybody loves the mushroom metaphors. Beautiful example. Yes. Beautiful example. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, um, I find um, sharing um, also uh, builds, kind of opens up things, you know, like the, the transformative um, way things just transform, like a situation, uh, an environment transforms. This when someone shares, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so segue like into. No, Matt, I couldn't. I would, I've run out of trash finds. Oh to, no! To share, and so uh, you have to give me something actually valuable. So, um, <laughs> so I had like this uh, mad decluttering, and then uh, um, um, so a little. I usually have like a garage full of like quirky stuff, you know. Mm. But I'm actually, you know, pretty smart. And uh, so, anyways, I painted during the pandemic, um, and uh, so I have like these piles of paintings which I wanted to kind of get rid of, but I. Didn't have the heart to get rid of. <laughs> so, <laughs> if so I can Matthew, help in any way, Aww, no, no, don't don't look in it. Too look at quick. it too long. Right, you might, right, you right. might go <laughs> insane. The abyss might stare back. Right? <laughs> yeah, Nietzsche, Nietzsche warns us of this. <laughs> and I'm giving oh, these out. Beautiful. I'm giving these out randomly. <laughs> That's so right, nice. Oh, go. I love it. Pandemic this is paintings. Great. Oh, Aaron. Thank oh, you. There you go. Uh, <laughs> That's you. so warm of you. I love it. Standing. <laughs> Yeah. Now, if you want to hang in the library, you, you know, take, <laughs> maybe and take put it in the office. It. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, or, or as you come in on the reference desk, you know, right there. Yeah. <laughs> I you can know, put whatever. it right in front of whatever. me. That's yeah. so thoughtful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Oh, I, I see a lot but, of circles uh, and interconnectedness in this one. Yeah, yeah. The, right, right. Talk about interconnectedness. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, one, um, if everything's interconnected, inter 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 one small change is a ch change for the entire system. Look at that segue. It's so, like I set you up for this. Yeah, yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> so local, global. I'm, I'm saying Thank more like so cosmic much. terror in this one. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> yeah, AI's well, taking over. That's, 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 <laughs> the but that's part of experience the, too. Yeah, 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 we can yeah, acknowledge yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. So, yeah, yeah, pleasure. So Sean, so, I do have a coffee shop. 
and I do have a distribution business and yep. an event business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But those are just, like you said, the coffee is like a medium for me as far as um, how do I cultivate community. So sure, sure. In all these different areas. So yeah. oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So a, a, a vehicle in a sense. Yeah, and then so what are some of the things that you've been you've been doing, Eric? Uh, let's see. Yesterday did a brouhaha at coffee. Uh, at Cambridge Innovation Center at 50 Milk Street, where maybe oh, yeah. 80 people show up, and it's nice. and my events are usually coffee and goodies and conversation and no agenda. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the the idea, where mm -hmm. people get to mingle and get to know each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have a little mantra that I usually say is uh, the purpose is to get to know who people are rather than what they do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. so I I really uh, encourage and model. Um, finding out what are their interests, what are their passions, mm -hmm. not necessarily mm -hmm. where do they make their money, but sometimes that comes up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what are they good at? Or, um, and maybe a question of um, what are you excited about? So some of these opening type questions and, mm -hmm. and let it go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That same space is where Bean Trust started in 2015. And that's Impact Hub Boston. And Impact Hub Boston is one of many uh, social impact co-working spaces. Jeff mm -hmm. Mamlet, the founder, uh, believed in my mission of cultivating community. It's a bit revolutionary in our fast-paced, data-driven world. How do you sit down and have conversations without being efficient, making money, you know, sure. all these yeah. kind of things. So, yeah. so I was on this uh, desire after I had spent 30 years in another um, uh, organization to do something uh, that would be impactful. Mm -hmm. So I started right off having these civil discourse type conversations. I'm not trained in that area, but I gave it a shot and it went on for every Friday for four years wow. and stopped down before pandemic. <laughs> but we talked about every conversation. The only yeah. rule was um, first person uh, story. So mm -hmm. yeah. and it. It gave me encouragement to be able to um, be myself and allow others to, to speak um, in ways that really resonate with their their story mm -hmm. and their past and and um, yeah, format might be top of mind. What's top of mind? Just so we can get things off your mind, and then maybe the very first conversation was what um, issue have has impacted you in a as far as stewardship or resource. Um, what is like in a sustainability type applications? That was my easy doorway into beginning these conversations. Can we dig on that one? What can you say that one more time? The last piece is it? Are you it, are you essentially asking what 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 are some barriers so, that keep you, um, or did I misunderstand that? So the the four year conversation every Friday was a conversation that spoke went into every Friday. So everybody listened for an hour. And then we crafted the question for the next week. Cool. Oh, I see. So like the that. very first conversation yeah. was I thought would be sustainability. That's yeah. I feel like for me it's a, it's a if we can take care of our resource, sure. then we can you know, or understand that or where's our responsible uh, part in that. So um, for me it was I remember that conversation as if it was yesterday. It was we grew up on a farm next to a dairy farm, mm -hmm. and I was actually participating in hooking up the pipes of the manure spreaders. Mm -hmm. And I saw the manure mm -hmm. going into the ditches, and I did it daily. Yeah. And I saw the grass sometimes die because of the uh, nitrogen burning on the grass, and then it going into the the ditch and going into the creek and. And I saw the fish dying. And so I, I felt a personal impact on that. Even though in Washington State, you could look up in the hills and see cross-cutting. That wasn't personally what I participated in. So my story was about what I personally participated in and did. And so in some ways, as a younger person, mm -hmm. that impacted um, just how we care for um, our environment. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so we heard from everybody um, that first conversation. Mm -hmm. um, from their stories of of, mm -hmm. of how they how they have participated within um, within our resource, um, and and then we listened for the next conversation. It might have gone to mentorship, and then it went to our grandmothers. It went to um, 
justice. It went to all of the different issues mm -hmm. of our day, politics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, so much is coming up for me as you <clears throat> talk about that because sustainability has been a foundational value of businesses I've been a part of and my own life um, since a pretty pivotal part of my journey in freshman year at college, which we won't go down that path right now. But I feel like what sustainability is and what it means has been an evolving thing. And I'm noticing mm -hmm. three really great people that are at this table that seem to be very growth oriented. And when we're open to always evolving, which you kind of can't help but be a part of evolution, but we can choose brain wise, brain power wise, I think. Um, can accelerate to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And something that I've been tapping into, listening to, and going back again to maybe some of the ways of the past. Not that I think we should go back, but a lot of indigenous cultures that I've been learning more about really speak less to the concept of the way that we've looked at his sustainability and move more to this arena of like reciprocity. And this is a no, this is meant to engage, not put down, because I've used all those words that you were just using, like the concept of resources, right? But when we look at our environment, whether it's the physical environment, something we're taking from the ground, like vegetables or whatever, or, or just time from other people as a resource, it can be a very one-sided potentially mm -hmm. viewpoint. And so this, this new to me in the past couple of years, evolution of communicating about this and coming from that more of that place of reciprocity. If anybody's ever read Braiding Sweetgrass, oh, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend yeah. listening yeah. or reading it. Um, I think it's Robin Kimmerer or Wal Kimmerer is the author, but she's an indigenous woman who's also a botanist who also is a mother. And you know, those are just three parts of her identity, but they're the way they inform this book and the communication around our relationship with one another and this like joyful way of talking about it as mutual flourishing as opposed to sort of this taking has just yeah. totally opened up and unlocked for me at least something that like I liked the word sustainability like, but mm -hmm. it's just this whole new thing so yep. if you haven't engaged in okay. that concept yeah. yet I just think it kind of mm. seems yeah, yeah. No, I say, uh, like all of you are already doing that this, mutual uh, Beverly, flourishing, you know? Sure. Mm -hmm. Beverly, Salem area, uh, uh, United States, um, during um, colonial times, uh, we could have probably hybridized uh, the cultures between the indigenous and, and Western sure. and kind of cooperated yeah. uh, and, uh, and then evolved from that rather than just what, you know, we, we know what the history is. Competed. But, we competed compete. rather than sure. co-evolving. Right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So here we are again, uh, kind of faced with, you know, uh, environmental, um, you know, all these issues. And it, it is, the conversation seems like we're going back to, like, maybe maybe adapt to the, in, some of the indigenous philosophies, ways of doing things, but also, um, you know, uh, the idea of community and, and, and local. Um, you know, people, I, I think, in New England were very grounded in terms like they would build their own house and they would farm. They were very independent. Mm -hmm. And I think there was like a sort of like a, a, a common sense that came with that, you know. But now like people don't, you know, you're not building your house, you're not growing your food. So you kind of lose sight in a sense. And you start hearing all the noise. Um, so you can become very, uh, I don't know, ungrounded in, in who you are and, and, and like what is community. and. Um, everything's sort of up in the air, in a sense, you know. So I, I find this conversation where we're just trying to kind of um, circle back, you know, and take uh, those um, lessons from the past, but also incorporate it into where we are now, AI and, you know, technology. It's such a beautiful opportunity. That. Yeah, to, yeah. To so hybrid them and look at it as opportunity and not as this, like, oh, my God, we messed up. We'll never get it right. Like, we are learning the same lessons over and over and over again. It, but the arc is towards progress. So if we get to kind of choose to be on that yeah, path yeah, yeah, with one yeah, another, yes, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, it so, can be a very empowering thing. Yeah, I think. That, that's the paradox yeah. of like, the situation we're in in terms of like the, the world, right? Where yeah. the best of times, uh, worst of time, best of times, sort mm -hmm. of thing. You know? So it's a great opportunity to do new new things and uh, rewire re rewire things as uh, systems come down and new systems come up. You know.
Uh, and but it's, it starts in the community. It's not like something that the you know federal government's going to do for us or the state government or anything like that. It has to, I believe, do like what we're doing right now and what you're doing individually. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I can mm -hmm. go ahead. I imagine you two see that day to day in in your places. Where, yes. in, where the community comes so regularly, and I imagine you even get to experience sort of that spectrum of where they are on any given day of opportunistic versus like maybe. Well, and also, I don't know if you experience this as well, Eric, but I, I know you probably do because I don't know how you can really avoid it. But I mean, one of the things that uh, living in the kind of world that we do now, let's mm -hmm. call it the modern world, um, uh, in a, loca almost every locality, unless you happen to be in one of the still undiscovered Amazonian tribes or something, you know, um, there's, you inevitably have a lot of your information coming from outside of your local community. It's coming sure. from, on the national level, on the international level, it's coming from media, including social media, etc. And so you can't help but be aware of how some of maybe a lot of the changes that you're mm. witnessing in behavior, language, et cetera, in the community that you're dealing with reflect changes that you also know from the sources that I just mentioned, you know, are taking place mm. and, um, you know, influencing one another on, on this larger scale. So I don't like speaking to what you were saying before about like having to have these things happen on a local level because they're not gonna happen on other, other levels. Mm. Personally, I, I'd say I half agree with that, but I half disagree because I think it kind of has to happen on all of them at once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I don't think it would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. And certainly I understand the temptation and many people and groups have had it over the years um, of like, nah, the world isn't listening. The world is not. Mm -hmm. we, you can't trust the world to figure this out. We we have to start yeah. with us, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. and then hope that this somehow but develops I, in such a way that it saves right. the world, but I, but if I, you will. I, uh, but um, I would think like what's happening here is also happening around the world. Like other people are coming to the same conclusions. Like so, so there's interesting things going on. In oh the yeah, no doubt. Like trying to figure out things, and then that sort of gets right connected up where we, you know, as opposed to like I just, I, our way. Right, right. right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe I'm just nitpicking. But yeah, I'm just saying yeah, yeah, it kind yeah. of happens on multiple levels at once. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean. For, for certain kinds of thinkers, of course, you know, maybe they don't have the kinds of conversations that we get to have because we're out in the world every day, but they spend their time instead observing from a different perspective, mm -hmm. you know, all, you know, to the extent that they can, what's hap what, what's emerging from these local communities, mm -hmm. these local um, situations of which we are one, and then they try to find connections that are a degree or more mm -hmm above that mm -hmm. in terms of, mm -hmm. it's not hierarchical um, necessarily, mm -hmm. it's just in terms of how much happens to be involved. I mean, a mayor is extremely important most of the time, um, and so is a governor, and so is a president, etc. cetera, um, you know, and they're not all doing exactly the same thing. Um, they, there are different kinds of capacities and, and there's different kinds of intelligence involved in being applied, um, mm -hmm. but ultimately each of them works um, only if, or at least each of them works best, only if all of them work together, you yeah, know, yeah. at all. Um, Interconnectedness. So. Exactly. Interconnectedness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll reconvene this conversation. I, I've, we'll, um, when the downtown webcam opens up, I think we'll all get back together. And Because I think um, I heard something like, you know, when, when you ask a question and you get the you get the answer, the answer is just the beginning of the process, that mm -hmm. initial answer. So you, mm -hmm. you explore it even further, you know, like sure. for instance, like, you know, if uh, what do you I don't know, if you you wanted everyone to be happy in the world, like well that's like, like an easy thing to say. Yeah, yeah, of course we all want everyone to be happy. But um what what how do, how does that play out? What 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 does that mean? You know, one thing it means is having that conversation. <laughs> yeah, 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 I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what's the cure for loneliness? Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 running into people and creating friendships, or you know, cementing friendships, and uh, like mental health depends upon that perhaps more than anything else. Certainly mm -hmm. more than any new drug that's coming down the pipeline. So, so asking the question. And then facing the question, yeah, and yeah. being brave enough to do it collectively. Exactly. Brave is maybe a weird word, but there's <laughs> something really beautiful about when 
it can be engaged upon and not kept. Yeah. Yeah. And without necessarily expecting that your yeah. questions are ever going to be completely answered. Of course. Yeah, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, so I guess like we've asked some questions today and we have like our initial answers to them, just generally speaking. And then we can pursue it, pursue the same themes in the next time that we get together. I think, I think it's good to, um, to maybe not say the word listening, but we have been listening, um, and may, maybe the words are a lot of placeholders and a lot of words are um, from different languages, which we've said already, uh, can have different nuanced meanings. Um, yeah, I do think the spirit of this time at the table has been really good because I feel like good query, good question asking will never go out of vogue. No. And, um, and really coming with why are we asking, checking our own motives. Uh, why are we asking about sustainability? Help me understand that word mm -hmm. or stewardship of resource. This is something mm -hmm. that I've been thinking about. So I think this attitude of question asking and why we're asking those questions are, are really important mm -hmm. when we go to big data, when we go to yeah. um, one another, when we are maybe when we don't even voice the question, our mind is a curious um, place at times, and maybe we are just in the practice of um, being interested in what others it is, yeah, it is a are practice. interested in. Yeah, I mean, like, and, like yeah. yeah, ask, sharing is, a, I find sharing a practice, you know, or, um, or a asking questions is a, a practice. Um, listening is a practice. I find myself you know, working, working on all of those things, you know. Um, but yeah, this is a great forum to kind of exercise that. And I think with the spirit of like, um, bettering one another, um, I feel better by hearing Jen's, um, by the question. So I think questions are, are very intriguing to me. Um, when they're not ask too fast when you're allowing like in music you allow the resonance to happen right so there's a lot that happens within the spaces right yeah well, it, most everything happens there yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 um yeah and it's, all, it's also um great just to, to hear what you guys are doing in the community individually and um such a huge impact you know and it's amazing what one person can do like one person who's like following their passion in, in a benevolent way um, can impact, I don't know, tens of thousands of people, you know? Sure. Um, so uh, yeah, I think you're each uh, individually uh, doing that. So, so, and so what's kind of fun about this is sort of getting together that uh, the, the, it can become even more impactful, you know, uh, as, as, a, as a group conversation. And then the ideas that uh, evolve from it. Uh, and then, you know, with the, the, the listener, too, um, they, they also can, um, it can kind of, I wouldn't call it like a virus, but, you know, if someone listens to this and it resonates with them, you know, and they take some ideas. This is, this is what the you, word meme originally meant. Really? Yeah. 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 Before it became what it is now. You know, it's the intellectual equivalent of, of gene. So it spreads from carrier to, <laughs> Wonderful. you know, from host <laughs> to two other carriers, etc. So yeah, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, I, lo I love mm -hmm. that. Yep. I mean, I would just say thank you for creating a space to second what you were saying because I think that having a place that feel and it doesn't have to be necessarily a designated intentional space. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's in that moment when you happen up to a desk where somebody's emotionally available uh -huh. or to order your coffee and you're emotionally available to come around and then continue. But when at least I feel safe and welcomed um, and a, like the other person or people are approachable, not getting the question right, but just getting it out and being comfortable evolving it and mm -hmm then getting into the meat of like figuring things out or just exploring things together maybe is a better way for me to say it like mm -hmm. that exploration mm -hmm. um seems slightly contradictory to what a lot of the outward social media mm -hmm. and whatnot where everything's kind of so tidy or can be perceived that way yep. um yep. 
but I think our brains aren't tight. I don't think everything's wrapped up in a bow in our brains and in our bodies. So to be able to practice Mm -hmm. in real life Mm -hmm. what Mm -hmm. it means to be imperfect and and grow is something that Uh, is really beautiful and um, mm -hmm. and something I'd love to be a continuous part of um, creating those metaphorical spaces. Mm. And you did that today, so this is awesome. Thank you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well. More. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this this will be uh, to be continued. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to end it there. Thanks, Eric, Jen, and Matt. You're welcome. Uh, wonderful conversation. So happy uh, for you guys uh, <laughs> for participating. Really appreciate it. And uh, thanks to uh, Eric for your coffee. And it's a uh, did you say it was Kenyan coffee? Or? Honduras. Yes. Honduras coffee. It's delicious. And I just want to yep. say it feels yep. good to be here. You know, sometimes we say feel too quickly mm. after we yeah. have experienced, but I, it really yeah. feels good to be here. Awesome. It's like the awesome. body language and Thank all of that is great. The chemistry is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, 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 I concur. And also, uh, thank you to uh, Kim's Pure Pastry for uh, she yes. uh, donated some scones. And uh, so we have scones and coffee and conversation. And we'll do it again. Right so thanks all, and uh, so thank you. This is the uh, sharing wheel, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.